Hey guys, so this is part two of my London life series where I simply answer a couple of questions I got asked about living and working in London. In the previous video I touched on finding a job in London and now I'm going to touch on finding a room in London. As for me, in the first year that I was in London I moved four or five times and the second year I only moved once. So I lived in plenty of flat and house shares and the best website I personally found for me was definitely Spare Room. The main ones in my opinion are Spare Room and Gumtree. I wouldn't recommend Gumtree because there are a lot of scammers on there. However, I wholeheartedly recommend Spare Room. It's a really user-friendly website. You can buy an upgrade so that you can contact everyone. It's usually more expensive in the summer because lots of people move in the summer and the upgrade is less expensive in the winter months. So I would check that out. And as I said, the website itself really user friendly, usually lots of information about the place on there and you can search using uh, various parameters and it's really easy to get in touch with people. I had to move or well, had to move and moved a bunch of times simply because I usually had short term lets, meaning I was only able to have a room for two or three months and then I had to move again, move again, move again until I found something where I was able to stay for as long as I wanted to stay. So my tip would be to simply look on spare room, but if someone is asking you to transfer money, even though you're not even in the country yet, don't do it. I met a girl who lost 2000 euros because she sent money while still living in Germany and wanting to move to London. Never do it. The person might come off as trustworthy, just never do it. As for me, whenever I lived in Austria, I looked for a room. I found a room online. I Skyped with the girl. She seemed totally nice. I didn't transfer a single penny. I came to London, had the money with me in cash. I met her, I saw the room, I gave her the cash and I moved in. That's it. So while it might be more difficult to find a room while you're not in the country, it's definitely possible because there are still people out there who would trust you without a deposit. And of course, there might be people who will ask for a deposit and who will not scam you. But chances are, if someone asks you for a huge amount of money, it's most likely a scam. So please be careful. Second question I wanted to address is how it was for me and did I felt lonely? Mm, yes and no. Whenever I arrived, I didn't have any friends in London. I had acquaintances, but no one I was super, 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 super close to. So the first thing I did, I went on to couch surfing. And I tried to find people. And if you don't know what couch surfing is, it's basically a website where you can crash someone else's place or you can meet up with someone. And it's a service, it's a website that's free of charge. And it's basically based on making friends and gaining new experiences in a different country. I mainly use it when I'm traveling. I also use it when I'm in a specific city like New York City or London to meet new people. I like to do loads of things alone and I like to be by myself so I didn't felt as lonely as maybe someone else will. But as I said, couch surfing isn't really easy and user-friendly tool that you can use to make friends. While I was alone, I wasn't lonely because I like being by myself. But if that's not something for you, try to Go on couch surfing as soon as you're there and I'm sure you will make friends really, really quickly. Also, Meetup is another great website. It's meetup.com and if you haven't heard of it, it's basically a website where you can meet up with people that have similar interests than you do. There are yoga groups, there are meditation groups, there are vegan groups, there are all sorts of groups. Most of them have regular meetings or some of them have regular meetings that you can show up to, that you can participate in. And that way you can also find like-minded people that will share similar interests than you do. 
Did I have friends? Yes, I managed to find some lovely people on car surfing and they became my closest friends. I also reconnected with people that I met through my travels and that I got closer to than I was with them previously. And I had a really, really, really awesome time in London because of that. And my first encounter was actually quite funny because I posted a post on couch surfing asking whether someone is throwing a New Year's Eve party or is going to some party. And this girl responded to me saying, oh, you can come to my party. I'm having a house party. So I went, the whole apartment was filled with people. I believe it was 30 or 40. Maybe I'm exaggerating. It was a bunch of people in a really, well, in a decent sized apartment. And I became really close friends with her and her sisters. And I love her dearly. And I'm really glad that I got to meet her. I know I've probably said couch surfing a bunch of times, but I cannot recommend couch surfing enough. If you're in a new city, definitely give it a try. And as I said, if you have a special interest, then definitely try Meetup as well. My friend, he used Meetup whenever he was in London and he said it's an awesome website. I didn't use it at that time, but I'm using it now that I'm in New York City. So this was it. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me down below or you can also write me an email if it's something more personal. And I would also love to know how you go about things whenever you move to another city or how you simply go about finding a place, securing a room, meeting new people. I hope to see you guys next time and have a lovely day.